Welcome along, guys, to our occasional bike chat series. Monthly. Now, monthly. Occasionally. Occasionally. I think it was about three months. <laughs> Let's call it triannually. Tri 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 it's like the advert for Kentucky, where they have fresh chicken delivered every day, three times a week. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so this is, this is an opportunity for you guys to ask us questions. So we've got some questions which you've asked in the videos, which people asked on social media last time. It's also a chance for us to talk about new bikes coming yeah. out, what we think, and just a bit more of an informal yeah, chat. Really. Talk about some of the things we've been up to. Be Over good, some alcohol. So uh, if that sounds good, grab yourself something alcoholic. It's got to be alcoholic. Cheers. It's got to be alcoholic. Look at what time of day it is. It's got to be alcoholic. And uh, Jopsy, roll the intro. So, since we last sat down, yes. there's been a fair few new bikes announced. There was yep. actually things like the Super Duke RR and... Uh, That's right. Yeah. Been reintroduced, isn't the it? The SMT, we didn't have the specs of the SMT at the time. That's the KTM 890 SMT. Exactly. Yeah, very good. But that sort of seems quite old now, <laughs> to talk about those bikes, when they've old, had yeah, launches There's, there's, there's been loads like of launches in there, and there loads has. of reviews. So, so we are ignore those, and we'll talk about some of the latest releases we've heard about. Okay. Apparently, well, it's not apparently, it's happening. Kawasaki are relaunching the ZX6R, which is incredible. I think it disappeared last year. Couple of year. I think it's been a couple of years. Two years ago? I think you could still buy one if you were racing. And Alex there, has got one. Yeah, there was a deal Kawasaki have done to supply dealers for, for race purposes. But yeah. I think there was an emissions problem, wasn't it, basically? Yeah, it and wasn't. I think Kawasaki decided that at the time that they couldn't afford to make all the changes based on the number of units they'd sell. Yeah. Clearly they've reconsidered that yeah. and they've made it work yeah. and they're reintroducing it. It looks good, is, doesn't it? It, it, it does. I'll, I'll throw some pictures up on the screen this Yeah, it time. does look good, yeah. Um, I think it's really good. I think it's gonna be about 10 and a half or something like yeah, that. Yeah, which so is pretty good. And actually reasonable. we, I, I know we've not ridden the new one because it's not out yet, but when you had one yeah. a couple of years that ago. The, that was the last generation, the last of, generation the old, of the one before yeah. I stopped it. It's actually yeah. a surprisingly good bike, isn't Brilliant. it? Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, it's got loads of mid-range. It's 636, yeah. so it's got a little bit more grunt than the average 600. Yeah. It's a good bike, isn't it's it? Good, so isn't it? Yeah. it has all the ingredients for being a good bike for not that much no. money in relative terms. And I think it's 127 horsepower or something, but it's going to yeah. have decent amounts. It's, 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 you know, like yeah. the, uh, the Yamaha R6 was always very top-endy, wasn't it? So you, you, for a road yeah. bike, it was all at the top, a bit of a screw. Yeah. This sounds like it's going to be pretty tall. That's what the old one was so good, to be honest. And so, that what exactly? And it's, it's a really it's popular. I know it's a bit of a weird thing to perhaps mention, but the six three six has been a really popular mm. stunt bike mm. because it's got so much usable, flexible power, yeah, exactly. and so it makes it a pretty good road proposition. Yeah. Actually, I think to yeah. be honest, so I think it does sound quite interesting, yeah, and does. of course. Because you can buy one now, you can still modify it afterwards if you want to, can't you? And turn it into whatever you want yeah. it to be. I think it's so. great. I mean, there's, there's, I think it's great they're bringing back some more of these sort of sports mm. bikes, 600, because they've just, they've completely been disappearing, haven't they? So yeah. it's great news, Kazaki brought that back. Obviously, you've got things like the Aprilia RS 660. Mm. Yeah, which is good. Which is very good. I mean, yeah. that's only about 100 horsepower. So this is going to be you know, a fair Different bit more sort of powerful thing, really? than that. And they've, of course, got the 400 now. They, they have, yeah. The Cow new 400. Kawasaki, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's coming out, I think, end of the year. So yeah. that'd be interesting as well. I mean, a little 400 screen. I mean, we've, we've been riding bikes since we were 16, and we remember like the grey imports where you had exactly. your... your, your GSX and is it a four 400. cylinder 400? Yeah, it's a four cylinder 400. Exactly, which so is, that's that, going to be that is quite interesting, isn't yeah. it? It's a long time since we've seen anything like yeah, that. Yeah, because yeah, because you had an FZR 400, didn't you? I did. Every yeah. time every we talk, like, yeah, you had one of those or some sort of some sort of iteration on it. Such a twat. I'm not here to be embarrassed. <laughs> it's been riding a long time, mate. That's all. I had Yamaha FZR 400. Great looking bike. Yeah, it was yellow, Great. wasn't it? Yours. I went yellow. on the back of it once. You did. Yeah, you yeah. broke the rear subframe actually. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked it. Yeah, broke the rear subframe. Shut up. You did. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I never knew yeah. that, did you? Yeah, did. What happened then? How did you spot that? Like? It must have been my hard acceleration, not your weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, yeah, it's just a bit. Was it? It's all fine. It was the indicators were like that. <laughs> also, there's rumours talking of the sort of 600 and the and the lower capacity sports bikes of the R9 coming. So they may be doing the the three cylinder CP3 motor from the MTO9 into like a 
bit of a sports bike. I and mean, this is what I'd done with the R7, wasn't it? Basically, yeah, the so MT-07. basically, just, yeah, just do the same thing again same with thing the MT-09 again. engine. Yeah. And what sort of power is the MT-09-ish? Oh, you know? that's, that's a really good 115, question. 115, 110? I'd imagine 120-ish, yeah. That, yeah, okay. yeah I'd, I'd think so. Yeah. Yeah, nice amount definitely. Of power, well, well over a hundred. A nice amount of power, though. Yeah, that will be because the R. I read the R7 recently that the new and we're only old when I come to that, but the new one it's quite nice and quite grunty. But you know, it's it's fine, but it's still it, it's, reasonably it, low powered, it, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. reasonably low powered. But I think the R9, yeah, would be good. It would be really good. Yeah, yeah. even as like a bit of a track tool. It's going to be similar to the ZX6R that they're bringing back. Yeah, out, isn't yeah. It? I know it's a triple, but that yeah. sort of power, that sort of realm. Bit like the Triumph six seven five, yeah, exactly. Old, that yeah, sort of thing yeah, sounds exactly. good. Yeah, sounds it really sounds good. really good. So, something there, I think. Yeah, we need to. But that's rumor control. That's, that's rumor not, control. That's fact, yeah. It's not official, but I think yeah, it's coming. It's, you went to the TT a couple of weeks ago, didn't you, for practice week? I did. Um, did you see the M thousand XR while you were I, there? I, I didn't see it, so it must be really well hidden. Yeah, but I have seen the video yeah, that you're since, referring to. Yeah, where yeah, yeah. Peter Hickman gets phoned by some product development <laughs> guy from BMW German and then guy. he rides across Germany, across France to, <laughs> yeah. and then ends up in the Isle of Man and yeah, then Peter yeah. Hickman rides around the circuit. But yeah. I, there's quite a bit of noise now about the uh, XR. Oh, I think or, it's definitely happening. XR M. Uh, yeah, yeah. M1000 XR. Yeah, it, oh, okay. it's, I'm sorry, the wrong way around. Yeah, it's, it's, defi XR. it's definitely happening. Um, yeah. I think it'll be good. Bloody good. I mean, I've been drawing with yeah. the Pikes Peak sort of multi strada. I know it's not. Exactly like it's that, a different sort of thing, but I know what you mean. It's gonna, it's, it's clearly it's, it's, a direct it's, competitor. It's, it's a competitor for but sure. If the M thousand R is anything to go by, I think the M thousand XR is going to be brilliant. I mean, it's going to be versatile. Yeah. You're going to be able to use it for everything that you want. Plus, hoon around on it. I think it's going to be good. And I think decent miles on it. Yeah, decent miles. Yeah, very flexible. That my only worry is, like the Pike Speak, it's going to be. Mega money, isn't well, it? Well, we say that. I mean, the, it's the, the, M thou the M1000R, yeah. the naked, I mean, that's 19 and a half. It's not too silly. I mean, it, it should be similar money because you think the XR is similar money to the S1000R. Okay. It's not too far removed. So your prediction is it's going to be... 21. Some, some, I'm saying, oh. No, I'm saying 21. That's your prediction. That's my right, prediction right. is 21. Don't know. That's my guess. 21. So you heard it here first. 21. 21,000 pounds. And Chopsy thinks that's not too bad. <laughs> for an M, is it, is it? Yeah, well, yeah. No, but I know what you mean. It's well, it's twenty eight. It's, it's twenty eight for the Pikes Peak. It's going to be. Oh, it's going to be twenty grand. Yeah, it's, it's going to be just over. But 20. no, you're right. The, the Pikes Peak is. It's not. It's twenty six. Twenty seven, but that's without any panniers or anything. Is that right? Yeah. So, so if if you put on the panniers, because you I mean you need the panniers really, don't you? I mean, it's the point of buying yeah. that bike. You want to do it's comfortable, super, yeah. big supermoto. But it's, I was speaking to some guy I had one the other day. He was 20, just over 28 by the time you put the panniers and, and the stuff on. But prices money, yeah. aside, because it's not just about economics on this channel, I think the <laughs> M1000XR is going to be very It's well going to be great. It sounds it? great. Great yeah. suspension, forged wheels, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's it got the, the um, shift wings, cam engine, It's got the wings it? on the sort of side. Exactly. A, bit, a bit like it's the just like uh, mega sporty, fire blades. Sort of yeah, thing. mega sporty, yeah. loads of power. What's it, 200, way over yeah, 200 horsepower, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, two twenty seven. If it's yeah. the same engine, which yeah. is like it's going to be good. Yeah. Isn't it? it's, it's, it's going to be really good. It's going to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely one I'm interested in. So, yeah, me too. BMW, if you're watching, I'd love to go on the launch of that. Yes, yeah. long <laughs> Both term of loan. us, long term loan over here. Long term loan. <laughs> <Ooh>, hello. <laughs> <laughs>so that's it for the new bikes there's other new bikes but the ones which we're really interested yeah. in we're not interested in your scramblers and, and, and your budget off-roaders and your Royal Enfields no <laughs> we're into something which is a little bit more sporty aren't we so, so that's the stuff which is coming out which has piqued my interest anyway so now we're going to go on to the questions now we had some questions left over from last time so we'll just cover a few of those I haven't posted anything new on social media okay. so you know the, the, these are some which have come really from the videos so. yeah from you guys. First one, which bike do you regret selling the most? And this is probably hard for you to answer because you've had so many. <laughs> um, I think it was probably my Suzuki GSX R1000 K5 yeah, um, that I bike. sold. Yeah, I sold that on a bit of a whim at the time. I sort of felt like I needed the money and I wasn't using it that much. <clears throat> and then, you know, I sold it privately and I remember the guy um, turning up to buy it and he was from the Isle of Wight actually and he came over on the ferry and then got a taxi over and then planned to ride it back and as I sort of handed him the keys and he rode off I was just like 
what have I just done as I was, as he was riding off? Yeah, that real sort of, oh, you know, my whole heart sank and that real yeah, sinking yeah, feeling yeah, was yeah. just like, and I walked in the house thinking, I think I might have made a mistake there. And it, yeah, it was a good bike and yeah. I sold it just rashly, really, I yeah. think. So that's the one that sort of sticks out in my mind. I mean, there's been lots of bikes that I've sold. I think, you know, most of the bikes that I've sold, I always regret, really. Because yeah, it's been it's always it would be nice always nice to keep all of them. It'd be lovely, it? and, and you, that's the thing. I, you I find you sort you? of get bored, don't you, when yeah. you own a bike, and you sort of take it for granted, and you think I've done that now, and I've you know I've done quite a few miles, and I've done everything on it, and then Tell you sell it, it yeah. and yeah. then afterwards you're just a bit like oh, you know, and I know you've yeah. obviously posed a video in yeah, the last few yeah. days about what you should do with the, the H2, yeah. and you know, it's tricky. Yeah. It's tricky because you sort of also want to move on don't you and do something new and we all want to do that and you can't have hundreds of bikes that would just be ridiculous well you might be able to but you know the average person can't do that yeah so and you, so you have to make some decisions but yes yeah, so i think it was that yeah well, that, that's fair enough how about you um it's, for me i haven't actually sold that many bikes no uh, um so i think for me it's probably the the fireblade project i had i guess yeah. I mean, at the time, it was it was the right time to sell it, definitely, because I didn't have the room to keep it, and it was a bit of a garage sort of ornament as yeah. well. So I think probably that, you know, it's one of those bikes. I think, well, one day, you know, because it's owned by B Motor. Or buy it back, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. buy it back. Yeah, yeah. But they've had yeah. enough of it. You know, hopefully they give me first. Is it, is it just an it. ornament there then? It is. They ride it occasionally. Do I they? think they get, he yeah. rides it occasionally, but it's, yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't. It's yeah. the same guy who's got the R7, so, yeah. you know, he's yeah. got, I think he's got a few other bikes as well. So, yeah, yeah, it's just there really to be ridden occasionally. Yeah, okay. yeah it'd be nice to have, now I've got the bigger garage, yeah, it'd be lovely yeah. to have it back. Okay. And I think the other one, if, if, if it's not that one, is my GSXR I had with all the die mags yeah. on it, and that was fully spec'd. Actually, the Super Duke as well. I'd quite like my Super Duke yeah. back that I sold. I think, in my opinion, that GSXR was probably a bike that you shouldn't have sold yeah. with hindsight yeah you know but again it's, it's easy with hindsight to say it was a bit of a mistake but i think you could have probably struggled through and kept that couldn't yeah. you yeah the, the only um, i think maybe if it hadn't been the fact that it okay. had been a bit used hard. used it had been a press bike which pb had had mm. for a while michael rutter had taken it around the other man on a i think he got like you're worried it was gonna go bang 126 you? and i was sort of advised not to keep it that long by yeah. the guys who'd run it at like pb yeah. so that was in the back of my mind a little bit i'm yeah. sure it'd have been fine i mean they're so reliable yeah. those gsxrs and i'm sure it would have been fine but that was in the back of my mind a little, little bit yeah you know um but i think the super duke i had was yeah had everything done to it mm. and that was uh those third gear, yeah. you know, but yeah. So on private roads, on private roads, of course. But yeah, probably the Fireblade. I'd say the Fireblade. But I think all. I think the problem is all of them. Exactly. All of the ones I've sold, yeah. you always a bit of regret there. But you can't it? say that because that's not the question. It's got to be the top. Is it not? Well, yeah, but I've mentioned a few there. What's <laughs> so, next then? Next one. So I don't know who these are from. So I do apologise. But the stupidest, stupidest thing you've ever done on a motorcycle. Oh my God! What you know what mine is, don't you? Go on. Have a guess what you think mine is. Was it when you? Went out on a crosser in the dark and went no, into, not that one. Went into a metal bar <laughs> no, fence and one. went over the handlebars. No, I want that one. No, okay, <laughs> that was, what, that was up there. That was up there. He doesn't even regret doing that. There you go. So, go on, what it was involved uh, uh, putting air in your tyres. Oh yeah, that's, that was that was funny. <laughs> that was unbelievable. So th this <laughs> oh. this this one, uh, it was on the fire blade. Went to a, needed some air in the tyres. I think it was on the first rides of the season or yeah. something like that. Needed a little top up, check the pressures. Went to a garage and they have, you, you would have seen them, like the air on one side, the water on the other side. Wasn't it was just, it? just the two of us. At just this the time, two yeah. of us. I picked up the hose, put it, undid the thing as you do, put it on the nipple, press the button. And normally you get, you, you hear the compressor going, can't you? There's like no compressor going. I'm like, what's going on? It's not doing anything. Took it off. Well, that, yeah. Okay, try it again. again. Shh, put it again. And uh, then I sort of, I can't remember how I realised, but I started to thought, hang on a minute, this is the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then just pumped about, I don't know, a pint of water into my front tyre. And what was unbelievable, that the nipple was the same. So yeah. it just fitted over the valve and just pumped Let water into the tyres. And we rode off. We rode. And you were going, no, I think it'd be fine, it'd be fine. And then it, all of a sudden... Got it to like... about 50 mile an hour, <laughs> it was doing this. And then you went to get it repaired. Yeah, yeah. And I, the guy went, the guy, the yeah, tyre no, 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 you, you often get moisture in it, it's yeah, fine. No, Took it off, he's like, holy crap. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I tried to, I, I, without taking the tyre off the rim, I sort of took the valve out and shook it about and a bit of bit came out. But I thought, I'm going to have to get the tyre taken. I thought, how am I going to explain this to the, the tyre guy bad, of what, what I've done here? So I went down and said, oh, I started explaining the story, saying, oh, yeah, I picked up the pump and, and I mentioned like water. He goes, oh, they all do that. 
Right, so he goes, yeah, no, because it's at the bottom of the compressor, there's a load of water. Not that much so, water. So, so you, it comes from the bottom of the compressor and just goes into your tyre. And I'm like, oh, yes, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, I love so anyway, that. He broke the bead on the tyre and he's so... <laughs> <laughs> I should have told him to put his bathers on before yes. he tried that. So, yeah, moral of the story, no, be careful when you put air in your tyres. Because the nipple was the same, it just pumped water in. I mean, it didn't even like put a drip or it, it just perfect yeah, yeah. fit. Yeah. So if you've done that as well, let me know in the comments, but... If you've done that as well, I'll give you 100 quid. Because mm. I bet nobody has. No, I bet they haven't. <laughs> what about you? Did you do yours? Or... I don't know. There's lots of things that I've done, certainly when I was young. I think one of them that sticks in my mind was just when it was pitch black, riding across a bit of a field with not a great amount of visibility. Yeah. And ended up running, unbeknownst to me, parallel to a fence <laughs> at quite <laughs> a pace. And not then barbed, it, it just sort of ripped most of my clothing off. <laughs> 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 so that was probably my biggest disaster. That was it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there's, there's probably too many to mention. Yeah. You going, forget so many as well. Exactly, you? You little incidents, so you know, riding too fast in the wrong yeah. conditions, you know, yeah, all yeah. of that. If you've got any really good stories, put them yeah, in the comments because yeah, yeah, I'd love to read them. Maybe we can read them out next yeah, time as well. That act could be funny. Be a whole video just on that, I expect. Yeah, motorcycle mishaps. Motorcycle knob heads. Now, the next question is more sort of a newsy question, but someone asked on, on one of my videos, what do I think of this Damon electric motorcycle? Oh, right. Now, have you seen about it? It's, it's, in, it's a US company called Damon. They, they've been going, well, I think they've just started production of the bikes, but it's been, it's been teased for what, about three years models, now. Or? There's two models. Two There's models. like a Street Fighter and a, and a, okay. and a sports model. Yeah. The, it's obviously electric, but the biggest thing what I'm quite interested in is it's actually got like a motors which change the ergo. So you can have it in like, well, the bars come down and the pegs come down for comfortable mode, or you press another button and they come up. So it's like oh, a sports right. bike, but you can be comfortable. You know, you can just press the button and the, the pegs go up and down and the bars go up and down. That is innovation. What a brilliant idea. That, 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 that is, is that's good, fantastic. Yeah. But what they claim is it will do 200 mile an hour. 200, 200 miles, miles an hour. hour. It'll do 200 miles. Yeah. And it's 200 horsepower on this electric bike. Uh, but not, but I don't know how they imagine. No one's confirmed these claims yet. Right. But they, they're take, they've taken a lot of deposits. You know, they, this is serious. They've actually started main production, and yeah. I think they're starting to be delivered early part of next year. Right. But there's not been any road test by anybody. No, but okay. I just can't see how they have managed to produce this bike when no one else can get anywhere close close mm -hmm. to those numbers. And well, don't be cynical. Uh, maybe, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, pr prove me different, Damon, because I'd love to. So, try long term it. loan over here, please. Yeah, another one over here, and, please. Yeah, we'll take one of those, <laughs> yeah. or we'll market plus, it in the UK, we'll tell speak. everyone all Pike's about it. Well. Sounds, that's it. Sounds brilliant. Yeah, Sounds but good. I mean, yeah. I mean I've, I've criticised electric bikes. I'm not Are you able to flash your pictures up? Yeah, there'll be pictures on the screen, so, so you, we'll you would have seen it. Some yeah. Up. Yeah, good. But I, I'm not, you know, I've been really become really cynical with the whole electric whole electric, yeah, not no, bikes, no. cars, the whole lot of the it. whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the technology that's out there, yeah, is not what's going to be at, not not what's going to be used. But this one is no, like, I think mm. I think you're probably right, but it has to start somewhere and it has to evolve, and anything that new takes time doesn't yeah, it yeah it's true you know it's and, true you know it's not something that happens in less than 10 15 years is it really so yeah. but i I, I mean I, I don't understand why these people are buying these things as early adopters though I mean, you, I, I, it's too much of a too much of a risk isn't it no i agree with you but again thank god they exist because if they weren't early adopters <laughs> no, the businesses would collapse and then they wouldn't be able to continue to the next stage so yeah, so the whole thing true. is you know in a way it's essential isn't it and you, you're always going to get people that are prepared to dip their toe in the water before others and you know, kind of, I think, fair play, actually. Yeah, fair, fair play, play. Yeah, because if there's no money coming point. in, they'd fold and collapse, That's wouldn't they? That's a good point. Good you know, point. and governments can't fund it because, you know, it's a motorcycle, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, they're yeah. too busy funding their mate. Yeah, well, no, yeah, no, no that <laughs> wasn't my point. That wasn't my point. My point was. Was. <laughs> no, it wasn't my point. That wasn't my point. No, so I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing. You know, and... Um, you know, I'm hoping that our kids and our grandkids and that can all ride and, you know, ultimately, oh, yeah, no, oil's no. going to run out eventually, so there's got to be an alternative. Yeah, isn't? that's true. That's true. Yeah. You, you're right about the yeah. early adopter thing. Yeah, exactly. But for me, I'm certainly not ready to, to, anyway. to part with my Next question. Yeah. This is another uh, co controversial one, I A guess. controversial question. Controversial. We haven't had a controversial one yet, have we? Well, I don't know. Controversial, but, my bike, God. Well, it's, it's all about bike prices. Oh. The, the cost of current bikes, you know, it always seems... Well, I was going to remember, you know, back when they came out, they're like the, the 1988, 89 sort of fire blades, about 8,000, 9,000 pounds what for the top, top level sort of yeah. sports bike. Mm -hmm. Well, the blade's 20 grand now, isn't it, yeah. for, for a fire blade? More for if you want triple R's. Yeah. 
but it, you know, but I think MCN did a. What's the question though? Just, well, a, just a comment well, yeah, on pricing. It's, it's pricing, but yeah. what's interesting, MCN mm. did a comparison of them take it into an yeah, inflation so, 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 calculator. So what is twenty grand worth now? Exactly, compared to what it used to proportionally be. Proportionally, yeah. eight or nine grand back in late eighties, and, and, and I bet it's probably less. Isn't it, it is. That's, that's what they found out. When you put it yeah. into an inflation calculator, it's actually slightly less than the, what they yeah. were back in the day. Yeah. yeah. But of course, that's assuming you know, people's wages have increased yeah. with with the inflation rate. I guess is is the big. Well, no, but that would have been part thing. of the calculation. Well, no, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not no, sure. Well, no. it may be, but I'm. Yeah, you know. I think in. I mean, the prices are clearly expensive, aren't they now? Yeah. Or they can be. I mean, you can still buy a lot of decent bikes, actually. There's and I some think that's corkers. Well, yeah, we well, rode the other day. The, exactly. the, the Trans Alp and the Suzuki. yeah, we were on the Trans Alp and the new DE. Suzuki uh, V Strom DE, and they're both. 11 grandish bikes aren't yeah. they in round under, numbers well, well under 11 yeah. well under okay yeah. well under 11 and you know again i went into it with minimal expectation not not because i thought they'd be bad bikes but they're just not my class of bike because they're little yeah. adventure bikes but we both had a fantastic yeah. time brilliant yeah. evening on them and i really genuinely love yeah. them so you don't have to spend mega money no but i think part of the problem in my opinion is that i think pcp i think that has a massive role yeah, to play in car true. purchases and bikes because a lot of people now are understandably they're worrying about whether what they can afford to spend monthly and almost the the, the screen price or the sticker price of the actual vehicle becomes a bit irrelevant which is understandable yeah and so i think what's happening is manufacturers are cotton on to this and they're pricing them very high and they're making their pcb p deals affordable yeah. And therefore, a lot of people aren't worrying about the screen. Not 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 worrying about it, but they're almost it's, ignoring it's, it. The, 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 it's becoming less relevant. And then after three years, they chop it in. They've got yeah. equity well, in the they're, car they're, or bike, and then they swap it. They're so, just renting the vehicle. A little bit like that. And so degree, I think that. They? So I think that's definitely you know. And I think cars are the same really. The prices seem to have gone through the roof a little bit because of that reason. And I think you know, I don't know what the percentages are for bikes, but cars. I think it's over ninety five percent of cars new now are sold on PCB. No, really? 95%. Yeah, it's an incredibly high number. Yeah. And it's definitely, and bikes are catching up. There's nowhere near that level, I don't think, no. bikes. So I think that's having a little bit of an impact. Yeah. But I suppose the other good news is the second-hand prices are also quite high. So True. if you own one, that's good. Obviously, if you're trying to get into them, it's not, it's not, not so, so good. good. It's so, not so good. But, but, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think the PCP is driving... I don't know which way around it is, whether the PCP is driving the, the list price up or whether it's Well, all... I think list price is becoming less relevant to a lot of people. Yeah, but do you, course, think, do you think that's but that's so that so the manufacturers are increasing the yeah, price of the vehicles because yeah. they would they wouldn't be that because expensive. people are less worried about because people weren't of buying course. them they'd no, no, have yeah. to reduce the prices yeah, exactly they? it's all about supply and demand and of course any manufacturer wants to sell them for the highest possible price and you know in each market around the world any product has a customer's ability to pay market pricing yeah, yeah. so what we pay here won't be the same as people no, pay in India yeah, in China yeah. in the US because it's all about market conditions as well so yeah. of course there's a base cost in producing anything. But so that, you know, I think that's got a role to play. But there's no disputing yeah. the the price of bikes. In my opinion, they, I mean, they are high. Yeah. You know, it, they are expensive now, aren't they? And you know, it's it's not throwaway money now for most bikes, is it? No. I mean, um, you, what can you buy? I mean, to buy a reasonably decent bike, seven thousand, eight thousand pounds. I think for so. sort of a, a, a proper. That's the sort of starting point. Well, let's like say the it? Hornet, for example. I know that's a seven fifty. You could probably get the five hundred for yeah. sort of six thousand. I think some of yeah. the. Uh, SV650 is around 6,000. Yeah. Sort of 6,000 for a, I know I get criticised for this, but a, a proper hmm. motorcycle, yeah. you know, sort of 6,000 pounds. So. But that's real starting point. That's isn't starting, it? yeah, absolute starting point. But the yeah. reality is, you know, most of it's now in the nine grand to sort of 12, 13 yeah. grand range for a hell of a lot of bikes, which yeah. is quite a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, so. lot, of money. It's a, lot, of, a lot of money. But, you, but it costs you 20 grand for a base Yaris these days as well. That's the other way mm. you've got to look at it, isn't it? Exactly. So, but anyway, there hang in there, everyone. There you've got to do it. It's We've not. Got do you've it. got to keep the hobby going. It's a great hobby. Yeah, absolutely. That's it for the questions. There's probably more we could go through, but if you've got any specific questions you want to ask us, let us know in the comments of this video, and then we'll pick them up. Okay. We'll pick them up in three months' time when we do the next one. <laughs> <laughs> every month, in three months' time. Every month, every six, four, week, four to six weekly, four to six weekly. Loads going on, loads yep. going on. Um, more reviews to come. More reviews to come, all sorts of going on. We're going to Spain next week for a bit of uh, off-roading on adventure bikes as well. And plus, we've got, yeah. I've, got well, I've got a track day at Stetterton coming up. Nice. So. And what bike are you taking to that? I've actually got, no, oh. I've actually got a ZX-10. Of course. It's yeah. the first time I've uh, ridden, the, well, 2016 was the last time I rode a ZX-10. ZX-10. Yeah, nice. and they first come out. So this is obviously the latest one. 
yeah. directly from Kawasaki. And, then you, and you're going abroad then, did you say? Where are you going? Yeah, then? going to Spain to, to ride some Tiger nice. 900s off-road at the uh, Triumph Adventure Experience Ooh. near Malaga, so that'd be nice. Just that, you? Just you? No, me and Womble. Womble's oh, coming nice. as well. That was meant to happen two months ago, yeah, yeah. but then due to all the thunder and the bad weather, they said, oh, can we cancel this? Yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, okay. so yeah, it's been delayed. Yeah, good. But yeah, that's coming, so that'll be good. And I must say a massive, massive thank you. You may have noticed our fantastic oak-topped table here. Look at this beauty. Oh, absolutely. This was sent to me Beautiful. by Josh and Nigel, who have started up a little bespoke furniture company. Oh, nice. And he said, oh, actually, it's really nice. It's, it's like, um, feel yeah, that. Yeah, it's, no, it's, no, yeah. No, it's totally smooth, isn't it's it? It's like smooth. It's got some inserts on there. So they said, do you want to, we, we started up this new furniture company, we can do you a nice table for your garage chats. Lovely. And this is it. So massive thanks to Josh and Nigel. I'll put some links in the description if you want to check out their website, but... Really appreciate it. We'll I can make verify. Good, this good use this, of this beer tastes even better <laughs> off because of the table. way it's just sat and perched perfectly. <laughs> so level. It's so level, isn't it? It is level. Yeah. Coasters as well. Yeah. Coasters as well. So massive thanks, Josh and Nigel. Really appreciate it. And if anyone else got anything you want to send me, then just let me know. Yeah, exactly. We could I'll put my address in the there. comments as well. So <laughs> don't forget me. <laughs> so there we go, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along, Greg. We're going to go right. and have some homemade pizzas now and a Ooh, few more lovely. beers. So uh, I suggest you do the same. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in another three months' time. Cheers. See you later. <laughs>